This is the War Veteran Reads Historical Document Series, narrated by D.S. Pope. The Olive Branch Petition, the Second Continental Congress, July 8, 1775. The following information is blatantly plagiarized from the following source. On June 3, 1775, the Congress passed a resolution forming a committee to draft a letter to the King. The members of this committee were Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Johnson, John Rutledge, John Jay, and William Livingston. This committee presented this letter to the Committee of the Whole, the whole Congress, on June 24, but it was not approved. Instead, on July 6, the Congress reconsidered the matter and sent the committee back to form another proposal, adding John Dickinson and Thomas Jefferson to the committee. Thomas Jefferson wrote the first draft, but John Dickinson, especially, thought the draft was too harsh and could only anger the king. So he discovered permission to make alterations to Jefferson's draft. On July 8, Dickinson's version was presented to Congress and approved, but not unanimously. This letter has come to be known as the Olive Branch Petition, because it descended an offer of reconciliation to the king. The Olive Branch is of course a symbol of peace. It has also been called the Hubble Petition and the Second Petition to the King. The letter affirmed the loyalty of the colonists to the king and assured them that they would not seek independence, only redress of the grievances. Congress's vote in support of Dickinson's draft, which is much more fawning in its tone toward the king, showed Congress as willing to give those who held Dickinson's view one last chance at reconciliation, though they generally didn't believe it would work. The Olive Branch Petition was signed by 48 members of Congress and entrusted to Richard Penn of Pennsylvania, a descendant of William Penn, the founder of the colony. Penn left America on July 14th and arrived in London on August 14th. He delivered the letter to Arthur Lee, who was the agent in England for the Massachusetts colony. The Olive Branch Petition, July 8th, 1775 To the King's Most Excellent Majesty most gracious Sovereign, we, your Majesty's faithful subjects of the colonies of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the counties of Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex, on Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, on behalf of ourselves and the inhabitants of these colonies, who have deputed us to represent them in General Congress, entreat your Majesty's gracious attentions to this our humble petition. The union between our mother country and these colonies, and the energy of mind and just government, produced benefits so remarkably important, and afforded such an assurance of their permanency and increase, that the wonder and envy of other nations were excited, while they beheld Great Britain rising to a power the most extraordinary that the world had ever known. Her rivals, observing that there was no probability of this happy connection being broken by civil dissensions, and apprehending its future effects if they left any longer undisturbed, resolved to prevent her receiving such continual and formidable accessions of wealth and strength by checking the growth of these settlements from which they were derived. In the prosecution of this attempt, events so unfavorable to the design took place that every friend to the interests of Great Britain and these colonies entertained pleasing and reasonable expectations of seeing an additional force and exertion immediately given to the operations of the Union hitherto experienced, by an enlargement of the dominions of the Crown, and the removal of ancient and warlike enemies to a greater distance. At the conclusion, therefore, the late war, the most glorious and advantageous that have ever been carried on by British arms, your loyal colonists having contributed to its success by such repeated and strenuous exertions as frequently procured them the distinguished approbation of your majesty, of the late king, and of parliament, doubted not but they should be permitted with the rest of the empire to share in the blessings of peace and the emulations of victory and conquest. While these recent and honorable acknowledgments of their merits remained on record in the journals and acts of that august legislature, the Parliament, undefaced by the imputation or even the suspicion of any offense, they were alarmed by a new system of statutes and regulations adopted for the administration of the colonies, 
that filled their minds with the most painful fears and jealousies, and, to their inexpressible astonishment, perceived the danger of a foreign quarrel quickly succeeded by domestic danger, in their judgment, a more dreadful kind. Nor were these anxieties alleviated by any tendency in the system to promote the welfare of their mother country, for though its effects were immediately felt by them, yet its influence appeared to be injurious to the commerce and prosperity of Great Britain. We shall decline the ungrateful task of describing the irksome variety of artifices practiced by many of your majesty's ministers, the delusive pretenses, fruitless terrors, and unavailing severities that have, from time to time, been dealt out by them, and their attempts to execute this impolitic plan, or of tracking through a series of years past the progress of the unhappy differences between Great Britain and these colonies that have flowed from its fateful source. Your Majesty's ministers, persevering in their measures and proceeding to open hostilities for enforcing them, have compelled us to arm in our own defense, and have engaged us in a controversy so peculiarly important to the affections of your still faithful colonists that when we consider whom we must oppose in this contest, and if it continues, what may be the consequences, our own peculiar misfortunes are accounted by us only as parts of our distress. Knowing to what violent resentments and incurable animosity civil discourse are apt to exacerbate and inflame these contending parties, we think ourselves required by indispensable obligations to Almighty God, to your majesty, to our fellow subjects, and to ourselves, immediately to use all means in our power, not incompatible with our safety, for stopping the further effusion of blood, and for averting the impending calamities that threaten the British Empire. Thus called upon to address your majesty on affairs of such moment to America, and probably to all your dominions, we are earnestly desirous of performing this office with the utmost deference to your majesty, and we therefore pray that your majesty's royal magnanimity and benevolence may make the most favorable constructions of our expressions on so uncommon an occasion. Could we represent in our full force the sentiments that agitate the minds of us, your dutiful subjects? We are persuaded by your majesty would have ascribed any seeming deviation from reverence in our language, and even in our conduct, and not to any reprehensible intention but to the impossibility of reconciling the usual appearance of respect with the just attention to our own preservation against those artful and cruel enemies who abuse your royal confidence and authority for the purpose of effecting our destruction. Attached to your majesty's person, family, and government, with all devotion that principle and affection can inspire, connected with Great Britain the strongest ties that unite societies, and deploring every event that tends in any degree to weaken them, we solemnly assure your majesty that we not only most ardently desire the former harmony between her and these colonies may be restored, but that a concord may be established between them so firm a basis as to perpetuate its blessings uninterrupted by any future dissensions, to succeed in generations of both countries and to transmit your majesty's name to posterity. Adorned with that signal and lasting glory that has attended the ministry of these illustrious personages, whose virtues and abilities have extricated states from dangerous convulsions, and by securing the happiness to others, have erected the most noble and durable monuments to their own fame. We beg for the leave to assure your majesty that notwithstanding the suffering of your loyal colonists during the course of this present controversy, our breasts retain too tender a regard for the kingdom from which we derive our origin, to request such a reconciliation as might, in any matter, be inconsistent with her dignity or welfare. These, related as we are to her, honor and duty, as well as inclination, induce us to support and advance, and the apprehensions that now oppress our hearts with unspeakable grief being once removed, Her Majesty will find her faithful subject on this continent, ready and willing at all times, as they have ever been with their lives and fortunes, to assert and maintain the rights and interests of your majesty and of our mother country. We therefore beseech your majesty that your royal authority and influence may be graciously interposed, 
to procure us relief from our afflicting fears and jealousies, occasioned by the system before mentioned, and to settle peace through every part of our dominions, with all humility submitting to your majesty's wise consideration, whether it may not be expedient for facilitating those important purposes, that your majesty may be pleased to direct some mode by which the united applications of your faithful colonists to the throne, in pursuant of their common counsels, may be improved into a happy and permanent reconciliation, and that, in the meantime, measures may be taken for preventing the further destruction of the lives of your majesty's subjects, and that such statutes as more immediately distress any of your majesty's colonies may be repealed. For such arrangements as your majesty's wisdom can form for collecting the united sins of your American people, we are convinced your majesty would receive such satisfactory proofs of the disposition of the colonists towards their sovereign and parent state, that the wished for opportunity would soon be restored to them of evincing the sincerity of their professions, by every testimony of devotion becoming the most dutiful subjects and the most affectionate colonists. That your majesty may enjoy long and prosperous reign, and that your descendants may govern your dominions with honor to themselves and happiness to the subjects, is our sincere prayer. <laughs>